In this module, we're going to look at uh, meshes, uh, fabric, uh, not fabric, but um, wire woven meshes and uh, perforated meshes um, or perforated panels uh, that allow us a sense of transparency or translucency as, uh, in many applications, a second level of the facade, a double uh, facade kind of concept. So in order to get started with that, I have a case study uh, that we can quickly uh, review. It's the Fulton Center. It's a transportation hub in uh, downtown Manhattan. Um, I think a lot of investment went into this because of 9-11. And uh, it's a innovative use of a panel that is perforated to create an oculus. So we see this kind of uh, the structure. It has an exterior and an interior. You'll notice that um, it's really, there's, um, we're outside of the building on the other side of this structural element. That'll be important when we look on the inside of the building. So here it is at grade. So here's the Oculus coming way up with a cladding on it. And we're going to concern ourselves with what's going on inside. This is a uh, subway um, intermodal transportation hub. And here's a look at the Oculus um, from the concourse at, uh, at grade looking up and um, quite a beautiful, um, uh, complex looking um, shape. And here's a uh, what would be a mock-up probably to describe um, some of the details of how the panels would look, um, some of the idea of how they were all different shaped. You can see the double cable system. This is going to be a tensioned cable system in order to suspend it, and the, um, uh, the concepts for the attachment systems. And here we have it, just to give you um, um, an idea of, of it being erected and the panels being put in place. I caught this while I was uh, researching this. Um, this image was important to me because it told me that it was likely that a lot of the design uh, work that happened with this project was done inside of the rhino grasshopper environment, um, indicated by this uh, red in the accent is very typical for the, um, the loci uh, descriptions inside of Revit. Um, the green typically um, for the highlighted elements. So this is, uh, tells me that it was probably conceived within that, um, that programming environment. This shows you that Oculus suspended within the building um, and uh, you know, the associated structures that go with that. And here it is, um, you know, here we can see the outside cladding panels um, the superstructure to support the um, the glazed roof system, and then the support of the um, the cable tension system in the in the actual Oculus itself. We'll take a few minutes and look at this video because it's very descriptive of its installation, and I think it's um, important for us as architects to think about how we need to describe our um, our some of the larger aspects of the things we want to accomplish in our architecture, um, how we need to explain that to a lot of the players. Uh, this was done by Enclose. It would be very likely that you could be an architect working for Enclose or um, working within the team of people. And a lot of discussions were going on. And it was determined in order to, to get everybody on board with the feasibility of doing this project, we needed to have a um, um, a really descriptive way of telling what was going to go on. So this is this goes to the heart of how do we get this cable net in here, accessibility to the building while it's under construction. You can still see the drywall even looks like it's still got tape joints on it. Um, and this is the real world view of that, just to show you the similarities from what they modeled to what they actually built. So what they're doing, this is the cable um, cable system. It was wrapped around that spindle to keep from kinking it too tight. Now they're opening it up to lay it out flat. And probably getting ready to um, put the rigging down for the um, rings. This is the tension ring that's going to hold the cable net up into the oculus. And an idea of how many team members would be needed to manipulate and erect it. And obviously another image of that looking very similar. So this is hung by a crane right now and it being the cable net being attached to it. So here's um, a, a larger expanse of that being put together and then the in individual attachments to that ring of the cables. And a little time lapse of that happening. I think they had an elevator over here they needed to protect and they needed to know that they could set that ring up um, and not have it interfere. This is a great image of um, just the sophistication of our animation graphics even at this level 
to uh, show the physics of a, of a mesh system, um, you know, moving back and forth as it's pulled up into, into space. So this is a, would be a real confidence builder in the idea of explaining things to the uh, um, contractors and the fabricators that would be involved in this. This is showing the setups once the cable is in place of opening those clip systems up uh, from the way they were shipped and then starting to attach the panels. And we have a, um, a jib hoist down there and we have some um, uh, scaffolding, um, like window washing, um, uh, cable hung scaffolding systems indicating how many people could be erecting, the, the need to deal with the shape of the oculus with the um, scaffolding system and some um, details of it being erected. And so there was a lot of, um, I think, um, information delivered in a relatively short video. So um, let's go back to our presentation. And in here, I'll go through a few slides that are a bit sharper than the videos and the other things that I've shown you. You can see the, the really beautiful cable system, the beautiful stainless steel hardware and cable systems. All has a really beautiful appearance at the you know at a level, and, and a lot of this attachment here is visible from the glazing of this second or third level um, mezzanine area. Um, note the cable systems coming down here. I zoomed in on one of these images. Um, and then the need for this structure in order to pull this into tension. So there's probably a lot of steel beyond this to support these outriggers because there's a lot of tension within these cable systems. So um, uh, obviously we've done things with our parking garage assembly where we've looked at this like second layer of facade. And this is just another example of that. Uh, looks like a museum. I don't know if I have this one hyperlinked. Yes, I do. So you can go and visit it for more detail. Um, but a perforated panel, um, this could be a, a likely an aluminum panel with a laser cut uh, opening. In this case, the laser cutting uh, only opened up some holes and left other holes with just the blank still attached so that it could be deflected to create that kind of second layer of appearance. Um, and the, our, our fabric systems, in this case, I believe this is a, this could be a, a metal mesh that's painted, but here we're twisting those meshes in order to create a um, piece of uh, visual interest in the facade. A lot of these are around parking garages. Um, so here's another, here's another example. We're not, no longer looking at a metal mesh now, but we're probably looking at a, metal, um, a fabric system in order to create these sail-like structures. These are structures that are in tension, to, like a, um, a sailboat would have in order to catch the wind and stay rigid. Um, this is on the um, medical campus in Buffalo, New York. And um, just a couple of views. I think this is an attractive one. I think one of the problems with this installation that kind of troubles me is the um, right across the street kind of look at the facade where you're seeing a lot of the exposed concrete of the parking deck. But there are many places where this is really um, quite beautiful and quite attractive. And then right across the street, this is just uh, really kind of a diversion, but important enough. Uh, a couple of things that are happening on the medical campus that should be interesting to us as architects. We're going to deal with glass. And so this is a ex great example of a fritted glass designed to for specifically for the effect of kind of keeping with this concept of these rolling surfaces. So they've fritted this in a... Um, um, a dissolving pattern um, gives the appearance that that might be coming into um, a, like a continuation of this curved surface. But these are now windows instead of solid panels. Um, one of the downsides of this installation happens to be these um, um, shades that are drawn and all of the variation from who had the shades at different levels. This is very typical of us envisioning a beautiful dark surface and then it being um, by users, um, you know, having attachments of other things to it. So um, along that, so we move down the street here, and I just wanted to point out this um, this really a streetscape intervention. Um, the um, parking on the campus, the ability to keep it a, a, a high-end, beautiful uh, place, and then um, kind of hide the cars, um, pull them away from from the um, 
from the walking space. They they made a very generous um, sidewalk and then landscaped it in a really delightful way. So you really aren't even aware that there's cars parked over here, even a buffer from the street parking. Here we have, you know, at, a, at the pedestrian scale. I was kind of thinking this is great. Somebody out enjoying this green, fresh air. And um, then they lit up the cigarette. But um, nonetheless, this is a really, I think, a really great um, example of a, of a streetscape. For those of the, you that are in class uh, in real time, um, we have a quiz. And then um, we'll move on to kind of the specifics of this idea of meshes, because there's a, a, a wealth of different um, sources and types of styles. So basically, we have uh, the idea of woven wires, steel, uh, stainless steel typically. Uh, woven on a machine where these are, um, uh, are woven just like fabric of huge variety of choices here. Expanded metal, the uh, best example of ex um, ex expanded metal might be um, uh, uh, industrial staircases where you have metal um, that's been a, with a grating on it in order to create a slip resistant surface. Um, in this case, you slit the metal with a die and then you can pull the metal out, expand out the sheet in order to open up these openings. Um, so this is an industrial material. Typically, you don't find it in stainless. Um, so there's issues of corrosion. Many times you'll buy this in a galvanized form. But there are issues with this as far as long-term uh, appearances. We have perforated metal also then. So this is another way to open up metal um, in order to create kind of translucency. Um, lots of choices in our uh, metal gauge, the thickness, the amount of opening area, and the material that it is punched out of. So over here we have, this is probably more at the Fulton Center um, uh, kind of mesh uh, material. Um, important, kind of maybe a little familiar with the manufacturers or the players in this, GDK, um, a European manufacturer, very high-end metal woven fabrics. Uh, McNichols is a stateside um, distributor and manufacturer, and Cambridge Architectural is also um, in the U.S. Not to say um, that it wouldn't; these aren't available all over the world. So attachments, um, like we saw in the Tension Fulton Center, and the connectors, um, the way they're terminated, all part of uh, architectural and visual interest and a consideration for us. So this is actually a woven metal also, where we have a rod, but we have a flat stock that's interwoven with it. So uh, once again, that really huge amount of choices. Here's a project um, that on its uh, face, I guess in the daytime, I don't really find all that attractive, but um, I'll just shoot ahead here. At nighttime, it can become um, really quite spectacular looking. The nice thing about these um, meshes is their ability to catch that light to create that kind of a fog-like appearance around the building. Here's another close-up of it. And so we have that idea of that second layer of the facade, the um, the glaze layer and then the mesh or gauze that goes over it and a couple of um, kind of details about what it looks like going up. Here it is um, prior to any panel installation so you can see those uh, bows. So we have a, a relative a square building of a cube uh, in fact um, but then the uh, facade bowing out to create another uh, second kind of shape form. Um, the, the idea of light um, can even be carried down to a, a very uh, detailed level where we have now LEDs uh, placed within our screen system. And we can use it as signage, create different colors with it, um, other kinds of uh, effects on the facade of the building. So this manufacturer um, has one of the woven elements, a, a tube system with LEDs in it, red, green, and blue. When they're all on, you get a white color. When they're um, and then um, as they're modulated, you can produce any color you want. Just in my searchings of all of these things, I came around this really beautiful um, transit hub, and I thought it was no, noteworthy to keep it in the slideshow. So here's a, I think this is Cambridge Architectural. This is a Las Vegas uh, parking garage. So um, Morphosis, this is in um, San Francisco, a double layered kind of building with that mesh on it. Um, I have this hyperlink, so it will take you to their website so you can um, look at some of the details of this project. 
and decide um, if it's successful or not for things that you might um, be interested in. So a few um, cautions about the use of metal mesh systems and fabric. This idea of dimpling, um, you can imagine anticipating putting all these tension panels up and having a beautiful um, flat surface and then uh, with some heavy side lighting seeing what is called smiles on the panel systems uh, because of the lack of support at the edges of these. And you'll notice the smile disappears where there is a rib supporting that panel. So um, not necessarily um, a deal breaker but it would be um, really disappointing as a designer if you hadn't anticipated this kind of final effect. Um, one of the other uh, really nice uh, features of perforated metals is this idea of transparency, obviously. So I'm going to um, punch up on that a little bit in the next couple of slides. This is a project. I think this is probably a hyperlinked um, slide to this project and some nice details of it if you want to investigate it. And here's a close up of it. And this is very similar to what we've done. Um, I promise you I did not copy this. I stumbled upon this after I'd started the project. Um, but this is a really a much nicer, I guess, um, uh, visioning of the concept where the, the, the um, facade is actually coming out to create an entry canopy. Here's an example of a facade with a perforated metal um, where the, the panels are planar, but there is some shifting in the um, shape and form in order to sculpt the building. This is a, um, you know, one, once again, another kind of uh, fabric um, on the exterior of the building. The um, metal meshes can serve, this is, I put this in because the metal meshes can serve um, a multiple of functions. In this case, it can be a fall arrester, just like a railing system um, on the second floor. So there was no need for any other visual um, interruption of a handrail or rail system across here to prevent falls and that's a way of reducing the installed cost if you're if you're using this in applications where you're trying to second story applications where you're concerned about people falling so here's another example of that where these are actually used as railings and then these infills you can see the glass panel um, for the railing at this point and i think this is a really nice um, nice facade so you can form, I have really mixed feelings about some of these, uh, some of these applications. And we have at Rigid Eyes, when I was consulting with them, um, we would get um, customers um, like NBBJ, a major architectural firm, probably missioned um, uh, to enhance a facade for a client, looking at some kind of a metal um, attachment. And so you can see there's very similarities in our project to the kind of attachment systems that would be happening in the real world. And then um, I've already shown you this. This is uh, rigidized metals, the idea of, of, of uh, creating a security system um, with the, the metal over the glass layer to prevent breakage, but also the ability of these metals to reflect light again. Once again, the idea of making these um, um, work more than just um, in uh, one kind of lighting condition, use the idea of, of auxiliary lighting. In this case, just a traffic light down the street would reflect green or red, depending on uh, um, what was set. Um, it, this is a, um, a parking garage again, metal mesh, originally proposed by the client. We kind of uh, inspire them to modify it. Um, this is really a um, just a walkthrough of some of the issues you would deal with um, when you're working with the vendor and the architect and you're the architect. Um, the attachment systems, where we're going to add metal to the bottom, we're going to have a return on it. And then making mock-ups, so we made little panels so that we could look at how this would look as we attach the metal to the frame structure. I thought the bent one had the nicest effect, but there are issues when you bend around the corner of how the pattern changes. All in all, that seemed to have the nicest appearance to it. And then, you know, walking through all the ways it would be attached to the building, the limits of the size of the panel. So here we have four foot widths and the idea that there are going to be these seams here and how we're going to deal with those seams. A mock-up of what the facade would look like on the building. In this case, I think one of the mistakes we made is we uh, over or underestimated, maybe overestimated the ability to contrast between the concrete and the metal. Very disappointing in the final project. So here we have um, 
ideas about the way the assembly would go together for fast fabrication. And then once again, I, I said, and, and I showed you a slide too early, but this idea of transparency. So here we're looking at a mesh system. We can, um, looks like it's fairly opaque. We can see through it a little bit, but as you step back from it, um, it really has a great deal of transparency. And you can see the read of the seams of this panel. And I'll show you some of that of it getting photo, uh, fabricated. So here's a mock-up, all stainless steel framework in the factory, um, a mock-up that we were um, at the very beginning of the project creating for the client, dealing with the idea of how we would tack weld these to the panel without having fasteners through the front. This is um, obviously myself and um, the master fabricator. Um, and the idea of what the seams look like in the shop, it looks really good. You can see the idea of the transparency of it. But um, in order to really be useful, we needed to get it out in the daylight to see what it looked like. So here's the panel mounted up on the building. And you can see a little hinting of the seams. But this is a good shot. This would be the, more of the how you would see it from the road, kind of on an oblique, oblique angle, uh, but still acceptable. And here it is going up on the building. And I thought the, the net effect was really quite disappointing. Um, and I should have should have really kind of anticipated that, thinking about um, how this building actually reads also with that metal on it. Um, but that's, um, that wraps that up. I don't want to leave it on a sad note of metal because there are many beautiful applications of metal like this building that I think are really quite um, outstanding.